Tip number three. These are the settings that I like to use when I'm searching on Upwork, right? So there's different filters that you can set to mold the criteria of like who you want. So when you're searching for someone, what you can do is, say I'm searching for someone doing Amazon Online Arbitrage, right? So for Amazon Online Arbitrage, uh, you hit the filters button and what it does is drop down to this section, right? So say I just need someone that's 10 and under, I'll do the 10 and under rate. Um, English level, I kind of leave it as conversational at the very least. Hours built, right? You don't want someone that's brand new, in my opinion. I don't like dealing with brand new people. I don't want to deal with brand new people in the Upwork platform. So I always choose 100 hours built. That means they've worked 100 hours, you know, that's equivalent of, you know, like three weeks at least on Upwork. So they kind of understand how it works. Earned amount. To me, I like to hire people that have earned at least like 1K on Upwork. So it kind of just shows like, hey, like I've been on this long enough to like have people pay me at least $1,000 to be on this platform, right? Keep in mind that some of the VAs are getting paid $3 an hour. So if you're doing the math, that's over 333 hours that each of these guys work. So they're pretty experienced uh, with uh, satisfying customers, right? And then you want the last activity to definitely be within the last two weeks. So it shows like they're active on Upwork and the job success, right? You want your job success to be 90%. Like I won't go below 90% like, cause basically the way this rating works is like, say I hire someone and at the end of the hiring of the project, I either can give them like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If I give them a thumbs up, then that means like, yes, the job was successful. And I would highly recommend that you guys, uh, you hire them too. But if you know, it's a no, then you know, your job success percentage goes down. And that just kind of like speaks on them because like a lot of people, if they, um, you know, like if it's just like below 9%, just don't deal with it. Don't deal with the headache of like trying to mold someone to be better, right? You just want to hire the best person that you can right away. Tip number four, basically what I always do is I always hire on a trial basis period. So what I mean by that is I never tell them that they have the job right away. I always tell them like, hey, we're gonna try this on a trial basis period. Uh, we'll try it out for a week, see how it goes, right? So that way you kind of gauge um, what they do that first week and you can see what, uh, you set your levels of expectations and then you can see what they provide to you and then you can kind of like bounce around with that and see like, hey, like, you know, this guy can adapt to my level of expectations. Like maybe he did it wrong, but he did it right the second time, right? Or maybe he did it perfect the first time, right? But at the end of that first week, I'm always like, all right, we'll go through another trial week, right? So just keep testing them, keep testing them. That way you understand the standard level of their work and you know what to expect going forward when you hire them. Tip number five. So basically this one involves a little bit of extra money. But what I like to do is, I mean, if you're hiring someone for $3 an hour and making money on Amazon, I think you can afford to do this test like me. What I do is I hire two people for the same job. And why why do I do that? Because I want to compare like who is better, right? If I only have one person in, you know, like I've ever worked with, you know, like I, or anything, like how do you know, like if there's, if I've only had one car in my whole life, right? And I just drive that car. How do I know if this car is better than that car, essentially, right? So what I'm trying to say is, Hire two VAs, right, for the same job and compare and see which side of the grass is greener, right? If they're both good, you keep them both, make sure they're both employed and have stuff to do. If not, you gotta cut the other one and just go where the grass is greener. All right, so tip number six, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is what I call the pink elephant test. Um, I think a lot of people have started using it now. It's, I didn't come up with this at all. But it's a really good tip that like I found reading the internet. I think I saw this on Ryan Grant's blog, right? When he's talking about um, hiring a VA. His blog, by the way, is online selling experiment if you guys wanna go check that out. But what he talks about is, um, is putting the pink elephant uh, in, your in your job description, right? So what, it, what I mean by putting the pink elephant in your job description is, so you wanna test their level of attention to detail right so when you make this job description you know sometimes it's like a lot of stuff to read sometimes it's really small but what you want to do is put hey if you read this and you're replying back to the job put
put pink elephant in the subject, right? So this automatically filters out anyone who does not have any attention to detail because there's a lot of people on Upwork, online job PHs, PH, that just like click apply, 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 right? And they don't really put effort into like, like kind of responding back to your job description. They're like, oh, okay, like if they say yes, then I'll like, I'll look into it. But you want people who kind of like look in the very first place, right? So, I mean, it's your business. You want to run it with like people who are attentive to detail, right? So use a pink elephant tip. Tip number seven. All right, use a tool called Loom, right? What Loom does in the hiring process and how do I use it uh, basically is, so Loom is a tool that like captures your screen and it captures you, right? So it just records you, records your voice and records your screen. So what I like to do is ask my applicants to respond in Loom actually. So when they respond to me with like some of their questions, I want to see like how they talk, right? Like I wanna see like if I can understand them you know, and I kind of want to see like the way they carry themselves, right? So when you see someone through video versus like seeing someone like type something on text, it can be a little different. Um, so I do a mix of text and video just to kind of gauge that, right? Because sometimes it's like just easier to communicate through video and it also allows you to kind of gauge their personality and see if this is someone you want to work with, right? This is like your business. You want to bring people on that you're comfortable with. You want them to be comfortable, right? So video allows both parties essentially to kind of connect a little bit more and you know, just do that. All right, tip number eight. So this one's a little more shady. Um, I've always actually done this, but I didn't, I felt like a lot of people don't really do this. So in a way like sometimes you realize things that other people don't realize so i just want to share this tip anyway so this one is about spying on your competition right so spying on a competition what i mean by that it's for example say you want to hire someone to do amazon online arbitrage right you know so in your job description you're like what do i put you know like what should i look for um what i like to do is i go upwork right so i'll go upwork and I'll type in, so instead of doing find freelancers, I'll drop down this menu, and I'll do find freelancers, right? Uh, no, find jobs, sorry. So I'll do find jobs instead, right? So I'm like, hey, like I'm trying to find a job where I can do Amazon online arbitrage. And we're getting where this leads to is, this is a list of all the other people who are posting, trying to find people to hire, right? They're like posting this and they're like, hey, I need to hire someone to do online arbitrage, right? So what I do is I, look, I scroll and I scroll and I scroll until I find someone, these are bad examples. For example, this one, this guy has stars, this guy has $200 spent, but for example, I would find someone that spent like $10,000, $1,000, right? And has five feedback or something. And then I would click on their listing and then you can see what they're looking for in a VA, right? You can see what their criteria is, right? So this probably isn't the best example, but sometimes people put like really good job description. And I'm like, oh, I need to add that in my job description. This is gonna be part of the tasks as you do too, right? I'm always like, oh yeah, like I didn't realize a VA could do that. Why don't I like offload this to a VA? So just looking at what other people are doing with in their businesses is how you can leverage that and spy, you know? Um, and just apply it to your business, you know? So why not? So tip number nine, basically, what this one is all about is just realizing that your VAs are real people, all right? It sometimes feels like a disconnect with your VAs because they're remote and it's like hard to communicate with them. Uh, just cause like some of my VAs, like I don't really talk to them on video all the time or I don't, you know, text them all the time, like, cause we get really, really busy and caught up in like, you know, just living our present life, right? And we just kind of realize like, oh, they're just person that just helps us like, you know, overseas. But think about it this way, like your business, you know, like this is your business and these are your employees. And how, how would you want to run a business, right? You're getting the opportunity to do what a lot of people like, you know, want to do, like have a business, have employees, you know? And as a business owner, you can do whatever you want, you know, like it's your business. You can run it how you want. So like for me, I like to treat them like their family, you know, like I like to know when their birthdays are, like I'll save that into like my folder or whatever, or my calendar and I'll have alerts for that, you know? So like, I'm like, oh, hey, like, you know, like tell them happy birthday, you know, little things like that. Praise them when they do an awesome job. Like 
in front of the team, not just to them, like tell them like, hey guys, Chris did an awesome job. He sourced like this product from this manufacturer and now we're gonna kick it off next week and we're all gonna kill it together, right? So one, you know, you're bringing the team's morale up. Two, you're praising Chris, right? You know, there's nothing better than that. People love getting praised. No matter what, you know, all the millionaires, billionaires out there, they made their money, right? Okay, but maybe not us. But, you know, people love getting praised. Like, you can't, like, if you're a human person, if you, there's a genuine praise that comes out, like, say, like, if you say, like, oh, good job, it's a little different than saying, like, good job, I didn't, you know, like, I didn't realize that you had so much potential to do that. And I'm looking forward to like all the stuff that you do going forward. Like you totally surprised me and I'm so glad that you're here on our team. So basically as a boss, right, as an employer, it's your job to help grow and maintain like what these people built. But it's also important to kind of look at like, hey, like what do you guys want to do with your life? What do you guys, um, how do you guys want to grow yourselves as a person? Like what skills do you want to learn? Like how would you know that say like say this guy one of our employees is super interested in private label I mean, he wants to learn how to launch products teach him how to launch products right like i think a lot of people are scared to be like hey like i'm gonna keep all this information to myself so they don't run off and uh, uh run off and do it themselves right so one i think the people who are worried about that make bad hiring decisions two in my personal opinion i rather work with a team right to me a rising tide lifts all ships and what I mean by that is I rather have a slice of a giant billion dollar pie than have my own pie that's only, you know, like $10,000 or something, you know. To me, like, it's more fun, you know, just growing with a team and everyone succeeding than it is just to kind of like stick in your own little circle and run your own little like tiny mafia and keep everything to yourself, being Mr. Scrooge, you know. So that's my personal perspective so on that. Tip number 10, this one's my favorite one. So all it is, is celebrating, right? So celebrating the goals that you guys achieve together or personally, right? So celebra celebrating like the little things, the big things, anything like that. So there's different little things that like I like to do uh, with my team, right? So at, at before every quarter, we set goals, right? I set goals for them to achieve. I'm like, hey, like, I want you to make sure our customer metric goals like stay like good all year like um all the feedback is responded to within like 24 the customer messages are responded back into 24 hours um any more any customer feedback that's like bad uh get it removed stuff like that right and if we hit those metrics like if they hit those metrics at the end of the semester uh, at the end of the quarter then reward them celebrate be like whoo you did a good job and give them a small bonus i don't know like Maybe it doesn't have to be financial. Maybe it can be some gift cards. Maybe just buy them a drink, you know, buy them like Whatever, you know, like just little things just celebrate just be like hey like whoo good job Make sure you tell them, you know Like maybe they landed a new wholesale client whoo like tell them like, you know, you did a good job like Celebrate if they land a wholesale client dude When you start doing those orders, they should have, you should give them a free product You know give them whatever they want and then give them a bonus right like, because they're generating all this money for you You got to reward and celebrate with your team when you know, so all the personal goals are there too, right? But you also want to celebrate company goals, right? So if we're, I'm like some of my company goals are like I want to maintain this profit margin I want to maintain this ROI and I want to hit it for the whole quarter, right? And I want to do this much as amount in sales if we hit it Oh, we're celebrating. So like, <laughs> we're celebrating. So I'm just like, uh, like we'll all go out to eat. Like me and my team here in Houston, which is just me and literally one other guy. But the VAs, I would like send them a message. I'd be like, woo, like let's do this. Like please go out and celebrate, have a beer um, on me, whatever. Like I'll send you guys, you know, whatever money. And this, right? Celebrate, like we hit these goals together, right? It's a team thing. And th there's something about like celebrating as a team, as a whole, together that just brings the company morale up higher and it just builds that bonding that one-on-one -on -one thing right and you want the morale of your team to be high you want that loyalty to be there you want to feel like you're a part of something right it's basic human emotion to want to be a part of something right so like you guys watching this video maybe you're like hey I want to be part of the seller tradecraft family so that's why you join uh, you know 
the Facebook group. That's why you watch my videos, you know? Like you wanna be a part of something and you wanna grow together with people. And that's why like we're all here on this journey together. So there's 10 different tips that I have for having a successful VA hire, right? So we talked about why we should hire a VA and basically it's because we wanna grow a business, right? We wanna have a business that runs without us. We wanna have a business that can run a whole year without us, right? That's when you know you truly have a business, right? I'm not there at that point yet either, so you guys are all coming along for the ride. But essentially, when you should start hiring a VA is basically tied to money. If you can do something, you can free up your time, produce more money, then you should do it. If you can hire someone to produce more money, right? Say like they do private label research or online arbitrage research, then that's when you should hire them. And lastly, like there's so many different tools that like I like to use to stay organized, right? So just hiring is one part of the process, right? So I'll be making another video basically about the project management tools that I like to use, right? Project management tool wise, I like to use like Asana, uh, I used to use Trello, communication tool wise, uh, Slack, S Slack, Skype, and Loom are like the main ones that I use. And you know, you should definitely go try those out, download them, but I'll make another video breaking it down, like how do I exactly use these? How does, how do me and my team communicate with each other and how do we stay like focused, right? Um, so, so subscribe so you guys know uh, when that video comes out, it should be coming out shortly. And then like this video if you guys got something out of it. And also join the Facebook group and let me know like uh, if you hired your first VA or anything. Let me know any tips and tricks that I should know about VAs. Leave them in the comments below. It will help other people and it will help the whole seller tradecraft community.